Hey everyone, how you doing? Oh my gosh, my first video of the year and I already broke my promise with trying to make YouTube more of a priority this year. Guys, I don't know, I don't know. Things are just so different and, and I have a lot less motivation when it comes to YouTube videos but I'm really going to try my hardest to at least give you guys one video a week. For my first video this year, I thought it would be fun to do my face half how I used to do my makeup in 2016 and half how I do it now and we can also talk about some things going on in the beauty community like Morphe all of their standing stores are closing down they filed for bankruptcy we also have the Tarte Dubai trip that everybody was talking about I feel like it was like even on the news so we're gonna be doing all of the makeup hot goss maybe even some of my hot takes on makeup products so let's get into it so I have gone ahead and drawn a line down the center of my face we're gonna do 2016 on this side and and we're gonna do 2023 on my left side. Before we do that though, we gotta prep our skin. I'm going in with the Tower 28 SOS spray. I love this spray because it just helps so much with my sensitive skin and it's a great barrier if I'm ever trying new makeup. I'm already prepped and everything with my skin, so let's get into it, bitch. And we're gonna start with our brows. I always had dark eyebrows in 2016. I really just, I have no idea what the hell I was doing with my brows, but I know I used to fill them in a bunch, like crazy. And they were also super boxy. I'm like, oh, I gotta make this look good. But it's like, no, you have to do your makeup how it used to look. I barely had any brows. I always used to fill in my tail the most. I would like literally waste so much product. Oh yeah, that is a Nicole 2016 brow bitch. We're gonna go in with the Fluff Up Brow Wax from Benefit. I always used to put a gel through my brows because I do have curly brow hairs, so that's one thing that I will never stop using is brow gel. That's for dang sure. All right, I guess let's just hop right into it. Let's talk about Morphe closing down all of their retail stores and how crazy it is. Honestly, I'm not very surprised. I made a video about this on my, on my TikTok. So now all I do on this side is just run this brow, fluff up brow wax from Benefit Cosmetics. It's actually one of my new favorite products out there. We went to Vegas with Benefit last week and it was seriously such an amazing time. We learned about the product. It's similar to a brow gel that is gonna keep your brows in place, but there's no crunchy finish to it. So it's flexible. If you wanna move it around, play around with your brows, you won't have to worry about them being crunchy, which is exactly why I love this brow product so much. So getting back to Morphe. Unfortunately, I'm really not surprised. It is definitely bittersweet because Morphe was one of my favorite brands when I first started. You know, they really took a chance on me and I reached out to them when I don't even think I had like more than 15,000 followers and they really, really gave me a shot. They gave me an affiliate code and I, for a while, was making most of my income off of the commission code, and I do feel for them, you know? Um, but unfortunately, I also do think that this is what happens when brands don't adapt to the current makeup trends and, and how currently everybody, in my opinion, is doing their makeup. We're gonna use this new ColourPop palette. It's called Sage the Day. I really like green, and oh, I think the Pantone color of the year is green, like a sage green. I'm not sure. I'm gonna go in with the shade Sips Tea <laughs> as we spill tea. But um, shh. and yeah, we're gonna put that in the crease. We're doing the 2016 side first. And I'm gonna actually try and make it look good. I know like some people when they do these videos, they make it look so horrible and it's like, bitch, no, come on, you are better at than that. Come on. And also in general, the pandemic changed the way that everybody wears makeup and honestly, 
I'm not really reaching for eyeshadow in my everyday routine in the way that I used to back before the pandemic. And I think that that's why people have, like I think that's why Morphe filed for bankruptcy. Like I really am not seeing personally as many people use their products as it used to be back in the day. I feel like people are gonna get mad at me for saying back in the day, but like, Come on, it was back in the day. It was back in the beginning of Beauty YouTube. So now I'm taking the color Keep Calm and I'm gonna pop that in my crease and I'm using a Smith 230 brush. And when I think of Morphe as a company, my mind goes right to brushes and eyeshadow. And I honestly think that in order for any brand to be able to survive post pandemic, I think you need to still have products that are going to cater what people want in 2023. And also it's not about like abandoning who you are as a brand. If you take a look at Rare Beauty, they have products that are meant to be worn with a lot of makeup and also on their own naturally. Like you can really sheer out the soft pinch blush and use it with a natural natural eye look, or you can even just use it with a full glam look. And when I think of Morphe, I personally think of them as more of a full glam 2017 brand, in my, in my humble opinion. I also think Benefit Cosmetics does an amazing job because they remained true to themselves. They still have their really fun, quirky packaging, still have their really fun names like the Fluff Up Brow Wax, but it's a product that's sort of trending in makeup right now and what people are looking for. And that's also not to say that people aren't looking for full glam. There are still a lot of people that want a full glam, but I just don't think that the everyday consumer is buying eyeshadow palettes like they used to. If you don't know me, I'm M to the B. We're gonna freaking do a cut crease, okay? Nicole Cut Crease Concilio. That's what they used to call me on those like blog websites. <laughs> We're gonna take the shade Smudge Me and I'm gonna just plop that in the crease. You know, even last Last year we saw Becca Cosmetics, they're no longer, I'm not sure what the true tea is, like I think Smashbox kind of swooped in and said that they would be selling their products there, but I'm not really sure if they're actively making new products. I should look that up really quick actually. If you go to BeccaCosmetics.com it says, Becca has closed. Okay, it looks like Smashbox kind of took over their stuff. Like it says Smashbox x Becca on Sephora. So I think it's, wow, that's sad, man. That's crazy, dude, I feel bad. Riley and I should really go out somewhere after this. <laughs> Now you can still purchase Morphe, but I I honestly think we will see more brands have a similar problem. Makeup is very oversaturated and I think you really gotta stand out in the current day. All right, you know the drill, time for a cut crease. The crease is cut. I'm gonna go in with this Tree of Life color in the center and just pop it on there. Ooh. That's pretty. I'm using the Rare Beauty Perfect Strokes Liquid Liner. I love it, it's so good. It's very easy to use and I love the actual bristle tip. So let's get this liner in check. Always a thick liner, always. We gotta get, of course, of course, a thick lash moment. So we're gonna use our e.l.f. Lash and Roll. I really, really love this mascara. It's great if you want lengthening. It separates the lashes and really elongates them. You guys know I used to love the Miami lashes from Lily Lashes, but I actually don't think I have those. So we're gonna have to make do with what we have. But I'm sure I have a lash that's out of control. <laughs> Whoa! I feel like I can barely see with this beast on my eye. Guys, how the hell did I wear lashes like this? Like, I, I, I feel like I can't even see properly. <laughs> All right, let's do our left eye now. And I think we could probably use the neutral tones in this palette. I'm gonna go in first with intuition. Okay, so a lot of people were wanting me to talk about the Tarte Dubai trip and like give my thoughts on it. And honestly, guys, I think that brand trips are a really smart marketing move for the brands. And it actually 
costs less than probably paying each influencer individually for let's say a partnership or a brand deal. You guys know I was very very lucky and privileged to be able to go on the first couple of brand trips when brand trips even started you know I got to go to Turks and Caicos with Tarte, I went to Hawaii with Tarte, I went to, to Hawaii with Benefit, I went to Fiji with Smashbox, Bora Bora with Tarte. These are things that have honestly been around for a very long time and it kind of just hit me. There's a whole generation of people coming up now that haven't watched the OG beauty YouTube and waited for the vlogs that everybody dropped. And from a marketing strategy, I think it gets a lot of eyes on brands and it gets people talking about brands, which is exactly what happened with the Tarte Dubai trip and honestly, I think the creators that were there deserve to be there. I think every single person there has worked their asses off to get that opportunity. And I don't think personally that there is anything wrong with brand trips, especially when you kind of explain the fact that it's really a business transaction at the end of the day. And of course, it is a absolute privilege and I would literally never have any of these opportunities if it wasn't for you guys supporting me. So I don't wanna sound out of touch in the slightest when I say that. But you know, it's just like none of us OGs really sat down and talked about what these brand trips looked like and what they entitled. I'm gonna go in with this shade manifest and it's a dark brown. We're gonna work it in the outer corner. In order to be able to go on these brand trips, you have to accept the requirements in order to go on this brand trip. Now you might be like, what the hell does that mean? It means that in order to go on these brand trips, you used to have to guarantee X amount of dedicated posts, sometimes a YouTube inclusion, sometimes it would be a YouTube vlog, and it's kind of an exchange of goods, right? Like instead of the brand giving you a paid sponsorship, they're sending you on a trip. And this isn't anything new. Editors used to go, and paid media used to go on these trips before they were documented by content creators and influencers. So this is something that has been going on for a very long time, just wasn't really talked about until around 2016. The way that us content creators would literally go on flights with like seven luggages each per couple, it's insane. Like we treated these vlogs like they were freaking movies, y'all. Like it, it was like looking back on it now, no wonder why I have like the stress that I have. It's like because you like had to personally, I feel like you had to be the best you had to have the best vlog you had to upload the vlog as quick as you possibly could because it meant more eyes would be on you it was like literally such a mind fuck the way that YouTube used to be for the beauty community back in the day and I'm really glad that it's not like that anymore I feel like there's a lot less pressure and I also feel like the community as a whole is a lot more friendlier it's a lot more peep down to earth it's a lot more raw and real and I'm happy with the change that it's been if I have to be honest on that and I had the best time on these trips I got to obviously I, I want like Riley to experience more brand trips because I definitely did not take the right person to those brand trips there was always some shit that went down on these trips too I'm gonna do some shadow liner with the dark green actually I think that'll look pretty all right let's apply this lash damn it is crazy how different my eyeshadow style has changed and don't get me wrong like I would still rock a green eyeshadow look on any day of the week if I really wanted to but it's just like my personal preference has changed so much and these lashes I'm using are from Birdie Lashes Beauty they're Jasmine's brand and Beauty Bird's brand and I love them I'm using the color bear that's my fave. All right, we're gonna start on the fudge. Oof, I'm hungry. Riley's making dinner, thank God, because a bitch is a bitch when she's angry. Ooh, you know what I also wanted to talk to you guys about? Just like how different the beauty spaces and trips within the community in general. But before we do that, let's go ahead and let's do our foundation because I'm gonna take forever. I'm talking so much in this video. 
sorry. Even though I'm not using a foundation that was my favorite in 2016, we're still gonna go for the style of makeup, which for me was super matte, was super full coverage, and the most full coverage foundation I have in my makeup stash is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. So we're gonna go ahead and go on and in with this. This is one of my favorite foundations, by the way. I think I've talked to you guys about this foundation so much. All right, so we got it randomly applied all over. Let's go ahead and blend this shit in, huh? Wow, that's, we said full coverage, honey. Of course we gotta do Makeup by Mario on the left side because we are all about those glowy, dewy foundations, bitch. We really are. God, I, I cannot get over how different, like full coverage, barely any coverage. Anyway, we were talking about brand trips. Trips are just so different nowadays and you never know like what you're gonna be invited to. Whereas in 2016, 2017, even 2018, I feel like you almost knew who everyone was gonna be on a trip and now I never know who's going to things and I'm like afraid to ask people because I never want anybody's feelings to get hurt because I know sometimes like personally, I'll feel a certain way if I'm not invited to things. My mind automatically goes to, oh my God, do people not like me anymore? Am I not good enough? Am I not creative enough? So I've worked really hard in the last year to kind of break away my opinion on myself based off of how my work performs because that's not fair you know like everybody's always gonna have ups and downs and ebbs and flows in their career no matter what so i'm just trying to be a little bit more gentle and kind with myself but i will say i really do like meeting the newer group of content creators i think a lot of them are really really sweet and supportive and i love that i wish that when i first started people were more like that so i i do have hope and I do really like the new people that I meet and the new people I hang out with. One girl, Kensington, I'm obsessed with her. She is so sweet, so nice, so down to earth, and I love her TikToks. So let's get into how I used to conceal. Oh my God. It was like literally like this. I'm not even, I shit you not, dude. I always added some concealer here. For this side of my face, I tend to use more of like an under eye brightener, but of course you guys see me use my Dior concealer all the time. So I'm gonna use the Rare Beauty under eye brightener and I'm just going to apply it in the areas that I do now, which is usually just along here and here. That is sh quite literally shocking, quite literally. Quite literally shocking. I'm scared to blend this out, dude. Like, oh my God. I feel like I'm not applying concealer the way that I used to because like, it just literally makes no sense. It makes more sense to have it in the areas where I need it, which is like my, right in this region right here and out here. Like applying it all along this line is really not doing much but wasting product and just making things a little bit more uncomfortable and creasy. We always had a little bit of contour, but I went fucking crazy. It was like almost like a three shape, like this and like this. Like a crazy contour. The nose, everything. Whereas now, I kind of just layer it on like that, and that's really it. So let's blend this out. So back then, I never used liquid blush, and now I'm obsessed with it. And I also feel like instead of contouring the nose, oh, hello, I still have a whole. And now I feel like instead of contouring the nose, I kind of just bring blush on the side of my nose. Oh, bitch, the way that I used to bake, no. No, I, I literally can't. Oh my God, what brush am I gonna ruin? That's what it's come down to. Oh my God, oh my God, no. No. Look at this. This is literally what I would do all the time. How, how the fuck did I used to do this? How? That's terrifying. And now look at how I apply my powder. It's insane. Literally, all I do is just apply it right here and with a puff. And sometimes when I'm wearing a dewy foundation like this, I will take a brush and just lightly set everything just so that it's not like slipping around as easily, but I do not let powder sit on my face in the way that I used to. Let's finish off the under eyes while we do this. The 
way that I do my under eyes really hasn't changed that much. The only thing that I do a little bit different now is just not as much product. Oh my God, this is so itchy having this powder on my face. And I would always add shimmer. I still do this, dude. That's funny. It's like the one thing that hasn't changed. And for my under eyes currently, all I really do is just take a little bit of brown and smudge it out. Sometimes if I'm feeling a little risky, I'll put some black liner in my waterline. But otherwise, this is kind of the extent of what I do. Bronzer, I think I always applied like super dark. And now I'm like really just like a little sweep. I also didn't do much blush in the day, but now I'm like literally obsessed with blush. So for blush, honestly, oh, and by the way, we're using this MAC. This is the Extra Dimension Blush in Rosy Cheeks. It's so good, but really, I did not apply a lot of blush. Like I was way more of a highlighter girl. But now I am like a blush galore, honey. I'm breaking out the Maybelline Master Chrome Metallic for this side, but wait, we have to brush away, have to brush away this whole fiasco. So we're gonna go in with highlighter to the gods, of course. The more you could have, the better it was. And there was always like a little bit of a milk mustache highlight. Look at. It was literally, you could never end the amount of highlight. And when it comes to highlight over here, I'm actually using this Say highlighter. I've been liking it. I use the shade Star Glow and it's their glowy super gel. You can apply this over powder without it caking. So I like that. All right, what? We just have to finish off lipstick and then we're pretty much done. Ooh, someone asked a really good question. They wanna know why I'm not at a million followers on YouTube. Um, honestly, I don't know. I used to worry about the numbers a lot back in 2018, 2017. And I honestly don't even look at numbers anymore. I look at this as a passion, something that I love to do. And if it does great, great. If it doesn't, that's fine too. Um, this person also said you should be at over a million and that's so nice. That's very, very nice to say. Um, I really appreciate that. I would obviously love to hit a million on here, but I'm not also putting pressure on it. If I hit it, I hit it. If I don't, I don't. And also I've been putting a lot more of my time and effort into TikTok and Instagram. So obviously where you spend and put your effort is where it's gonna be the best. And then someone also wants to know, a lot of you guys are asking stuff that I already touch base on but the last thing that i guess i'll answer is your thoughts on youtube versus tiktok and how it relates to your career so i do feel like personally youtube is going to do a wraparound if you're not on tiktok then you probably won't understand that reference i do feel like youtube has been one of the only platforms that has survived you know facebook really isn't prevalent anymore same with MySpace, Instagram, in my opinion, really isn't that amazing anymore. And I honestly feel like YouTube has always been consistent. I just think where people are consuming beauty content has shifted and changed a little bit. But I'm gonna try, like I said, to give you guys a video at least once a week. So let's go ahead and do how I would do my lipstick. And we're using the Rare Beauty Kind Words matte lippy i would overline the shit out of my lips guys like it was insane how much we overlined i also had insane lip filler it's funny because now i reach for lip liners and i don't overline that much so we're gonna use the fenty beauty oh shit this just spilled everywhere fuck it probably ruined my new jeans Shit! I didn't know. Oh my God, lipstick never does that. These have to go right in the wash. I'm not even gonna, right in the wash, right in the wash. But anyway, I'm using the shade Unbutton from the Stunna Lip Paint. I actually really love this color and I think it's a really great lipstick and it's actually a liquid to matte lipstick that's a super comfortable formula. It's so funny because now literally all I do is like lip liner and gloss. And obviously that is shout out to women of color, Latinas who started this trend way back 
in the day with the darker lip liner and gloss. You guys, this is the finished look. Oh my God. Honestly, I really like the way the eyeshadow looks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope everybody's having a great start to their 2023. Honestly, mine is sucking. <laughs> But that's okay. Things are about to get better because there are no planets in retrograde, which is, woo, thank God. But thank you guys so much for watching. I had such a fun time talking about these topics and taking a trip down memory lane. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. And if you do like what you see, please consider subscribing and I will see you guys next time. Bye.